What's up, everyone? Welcome to the 621st episode of the Pokemon Podcast. It's super effective. I'm your host, Steve. With me is Hannah. I I am here. I am slightly more well slept than last week. And today is Gumi Community Day as we are recording. So I'm excited for that. The Goom the Goomster. <laughs> Bobby also here. <laughs> uh yeah not as well slept as last time and that was when i got up earlier so that's a a bit of a bummer but it was a it was a late night last night so uh sleep sleep score not so great today (laughs) well speaking of sleep we got some sleep news this is primarily a sleep podcast now and then uh we have some fbi news because that makes sense with pokemon (laughs) (laughs) And <laughs> there's some stuff regarding Pokemon Go. Um, Scarlet and Violet wise, there was the Water Festival event, which by the time this podcast goes up is 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 gone, came and came and went. But that's still cool. They're doing mass outbreaks. Uh, this was the second week of Swampert came and went. Uh, so whatever seven star will be next. And then. Who knows? Maybe they'll announce that tonight because they usually announce that <laughs> right after we're done recording. So. Yep. Maybe it'll <laughs> finally be Sceptile. Maybe. That's yeah. <laughs> Steve's waiting. Steve's just I'm waiting. ready to hit publish on that video. It is done. The graphics <laughs> are done. The video is done. Watch them announce Electric Sceptile. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess, I mean, it gets Thunder Punch. It would make sense. Pokemon Sleep. Let's 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 start there. Uh look. If you're <laughs> listening to this podcast and you're going to like write a review and say like the, the 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 hosts are so negative, they hate Pokemon, you are clearly skipping the first 30 minutes of the show every single week because Pokemon Sleep is one of the best games and I cannot praise it enough of how good it is how exciting I am every morning, how I'm not upset. I'm giving it $10 a month in the battle fast season pass or <laughs> the Pokemon sleep battle pass. <laughs> there, We are the most positive podcast when it comes to Pokemon sleep. Maybe the only <laughs> podcast covering Pokemon sleep. Yeah. But it's a great game. It's fantastic. And when even when I say all that, when you're like, man, how could they make this game any better? <laughs> they did. Cramorant is coming to the game. <laughs> One week away. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it's like they know you talk about Pokemon Sleep mm-hmm. more than any other Pokemon game. <laughs> Genuinely. I really hope. I don't know how many people work at Select Button. I I feel like last I heard it was only like six people work there, but I hope one of those six people <laughs> listen to this podcast. Uh, how many times were you told the other day that Cramrant was coming to Pokemon Sleep? I feel like every <laughs> every platform I went on, there was only people telling Steve that Cramrant was coming. <laughs> um, ironically enough, I woke up from a nap. Uh, <laughs> And Presumably, I, you weren't tracking your sleep in Pokemon Sleep during No, the nap. I don't like to track my naps. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not good strategy. Mm-hmm. Not a good strat. I don't know how many people work at Select Button. I have no clue. It doesn't say anything. I have anywhere. to imagine it's more than, is it more than six, though. Really? I don't, six? They're, pre, they're a really small company. Yeah, but six is really, really <laughs> small. Really, really I mean, really look small. at the guy who made Stardew Valley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still (laughs) they don't have a you know they only have four games under their belt and i don't think survive mola mola was employing like 20 people you never know have you played survive mola mola (laughs) you know (laughs) i haven't (laughs) 
Uh, so the news was only posted like 10 minutes after I woke up. So I, 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 I got, I got the, I got the complete, the fill of it pretty quickly. If you work at select button, please let us know how many people work for your company. I don't think they're going to do that, but maybe. <laughs> well then see, I, then I don't have to ask if they listen to the podcast because when they reach out to say there's only six people working, then that mm-hmm. confirms they also listen to the podcast. <laughs> Okay. It's like two birds, one stone. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> yes, a lot of people told me Kramer and I was coming. There's a whole event coming. Uh, the Summer Festival event, which uh, is going to be a week-long event featuring water flying and bug-type Pokemon. Not sure why they needed to include bug types in there. It's the summer thing. It's the time of year when all the cicadas come out yeah. in places there are cicadas and all of that. The re- the real twist would have been adding Nincada to the game. <laughs> I guess. I feel like bugs are all year long. But isn't it? But there are is, more. This is like the time when the bugs are. Yeah, isn't this supposed to be a really bad year for cicadas? Yeah, because there's two different. Yeah. I'm not going to get this right, but there's like two different types that are going to be hatching or whatever hatching at the same time or something like that so it's like more than it even normally would be and that happened four years ago i don't know <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, know i don't know the I don't... there's two numbers I only have the moon cycles in my calendar i don't have the cicada cycles <laughs> <laughs> uh this summer festival event will feature uh a limited time function of the candy cramomatic it's really cool that like the Cramomatic is coming to another game, like they're mm-hmm. using it again. That's mm-hmm. awesome. It's not just Cramorant that's coming to Pokemon Sleep, it's also the Cramomatic. <laughs> uh, this function allows you to get M sized candy of various types by feeding Dream Shards and Pokemon candies to the Candy Cramomatic. Uh, before we go any further, I'm just going to explain how this works. Uh, you can put any cr- candy into the Cramomatic and then turn that into something else. So, for example, let's say there are some Pokemon in the game that are completely garbage, like Gulpin, and you would have no reason to ever power up a Gulpin. You could take all your Gulpin candy, which you should not be using at all. You should not be powering up any Gulpin. And then you can put that in the Cramomatic, and then that should give you poison medium candy back that then you could put into a different poison pokemon which i think the best poison pokemon in the game is like krogunk i think because it gets you like oil um there's probably something else that i'm not thinking don't say venusaur venusaur's grass there's only single type pokemon (laughs) in the game are there any other poison type pokemon in the game other than gulpin and krogunk uh i know you know that's a good question i don't not that i'm thinking of because there's no poison. Well, Ekans. Ah. Uh, well, Ekans, you should also be putting into the Cramomatic as well. <laughs> well, then what's the... I mean, for the poison... Yeah, I just got Krogunk and Ekans. Oh, I don't even have yeah. it open. <laughs> wow. I have like a thousand Jigglypuff candy. And my Wigglytuff is like level 53 or something. And it can only go to 55. I don't think that's worth going into the Cramomatic personally. Because eventually they'll raise that level cap. Yeah, the, you're going to want that candy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do have like a thousand Rattata candy. And I know Rat- Raticate is like a B-ish Pokemon in the game. Like even if you had the best Raticate, it's still not like something you're like. Not, not something you're going to have on your team. Yeah, yeah, you would have it on like Tundra. But even so, not completely amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, But I would probably maybe put. I don't know, like Kangaskhan would be a better normal type Pokemon, so you could probably grind up your Raticade, put it into Kangaskhan, or... <laughs> Poor Raticade. Like Meowth is another Pokemon that you would... Like, literally, here, here's your tip. Any Pokemon where their main skill is Dream Shard bonus, I'm looking at you, <laughs> Riolu. Riolu. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Those are all Pokemon that you can grind candy up for because unless there's like a severe boost to dream shard bonus those pokemon are just bad currently yeah 
Yep. For Riolu. Uh, I guess it makes... So recently, I don't know which update it was, but they added to when you open up your bag, you now have the ingredients option, the items option, and then the Pokemon candies option. Mm -hmm. So that is nice now looking at thinking about like being able to quickly see what mm -hmm. you have a lot of candy of or what you need to what you're going to want to put in there. So uh, I think that's yeah. a nice little. It definitely feels like that update was made for the Grammomatics feature. Yeah, exactly. But yeah that you can actually see you have 278 growlith candy and just compare it to all yep. of the others exactly because i was thinking when it came out i was like what is what good is i mean it's great to see what i have candy for but if you click on candy you can't do anything with it it just tells you <laughs> that it's candy now so, you're going to be able to do something with it this makes more sense yes <laughs> uh this is limited though uh the cramomatic will be gone when the event is over um and then i think Although I'm scanning this news article, I think there's a limit. Yeah, you can use it four times a day. So just be kind of maybe... You can use it four times a day, and each time you use it, it'll take more Dream Shards. So you're going to want to use it over the course of the week, rather yeah. than all in one or two days. You are you would be better off doing it once a day for seven days, instead of twice Instead of four times a day for two days. Mm -hmm. Yes. You would. Yeah. yeah. So. But again, maybe but, maybe yeah. plan out what you're going to throw away. And their example is like putting Bulbasaur. Don't. Their, their example is Bulbasaur candy. Don't just put the Bulbasaur candy into Bulbasaur. <laughs> you want <laughs> to level that one up. <laughs> Um, there will be bonuses. This event starts on June 17th and runs a whole week. Uh, dishes will be set to curry and stew. I don't know if we've talked about this on the show. I, I know I keep saying I'm working on a big Pokemon sleep video. I, I am. I promise it's, it's, I've recorded so much footage. I wrote like too many words. It was like a 40 minute video. I brought it down to 20 minutes. There's a lot. I um, it's almost done. I promise. It probably would have been done if I wasn't in Japan for two weeks. I did not say this in the video, but I will say it here. Here's your tip: when you know that the event for the we know that the event coming up will be curry, right? So you can set aside certain ingredients so you can start off your week strong. So if you look at your curry list and your like best meal is like mushrooms potatoes i don't know i don't know a curry recipe off the top of my head like mushrooms potato corn um like you could just go this whole week or next week i guess well this week you could go this whole week and just like try to avoid using mushrooms or switch to a pokemon to get you the ingredients and kind of set them aside and because there are no bonuses this week the week we're recording this you could just be like ah like it's going to be a bad week but that's okay because next week I'm going to I'm going to pop the good camp ticket. I'm saving my mushrooms. Cramoran mm -hmm. is coming. You can kind of like pre-game your <laughs> but there's a lot of pre-game in a Pokémon sleep. A lot of pre-gaming in sleep. This is <laughs> You can plan and you can prepare for the week that's coming ahead, especially if you know which island you're going to because then you will know the berries and the kind of meal that is going to be there for that week. Mm -hmm. And that means you can prepare your entire team ahead of time. Yeah. Which yeah, is huge. like if you knew it was going to be dessert, you would want us to save like cacao. Because I, I actually don't even think there's any meals, curries that use cacao at all. <laughs> I think there's one. Yeah, I feel like there's one. There's one there... or two, but it's not, not, yeah, not nearly as many as something like dessert. Yeah. Speaking of islands, uh, Top Hollow is off the list. <laughs> Sad, sad. No great music this week or that week, I guess. Uh, Cramorant's going to be on three islands. It's going to be on green grass because every Pokemon is on green grass. Uh, it's going to be on Cyan Beach, and it's going to be on Snowdrop Tundra, actually, which is a little weird because I feel like Cramorant fits a little bit better on Lapis Lakeside than it does in Snowdrop. But mm -hmm. maybe the developers also realize that Snowdrop is just as useless as Topalo. Like those, <laughs> to be fair, those two islands do get... <laughs> like 
<laughs> skipped the most. Like I think a lot of people just go straight to Lapis because of Ralts and because of Stuffle and because of um, Dratini. Like no other islands have those. Yeah. And those three Pokemon specifically do have a legitimate power creep compared to every other Pokemon before it. So my suggestion is go to the island that one you have unlocked, but also that your island, what is it called? The island like score island boost or whatever island is power. highest island boost. Yeah. It sounds yeah. Great. Cause it can go up to 60%. So most people should have probably green grass at 60%, especially if you've been playing for like two or three months. Not Bobby though. Not me. Not me <laughs> no, just, I'm only ever on green grass during those events during mm-hmm. like the legend. Like I've only been on green grass during Entei and Raiko, uh, Raiko events. So I think I would like, it seems like your best chance to get Cramorant would be Snowdrop because the boosted Pokemon on Snowdrop are Psychic or Psyduck, Slowpoke, Slowbro, Delibird, Swablu, Cramorant. Mm-hmm. And then on green grass, literally every Pokemon under the sun. <laughs> uh, but well, a lot of them. <laughs> All the my, ones my, that are the right types. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that match bug, flying, and water. Uh, but I think I'm going to go to the beach because I have a excellent Blastoise, so I know it's going to be Oranberry. I have a Wigglytuff. I know that the little... Was Wiggly? Petchaberry? Petchaberry. Yeah, yeah, I know that. So I know like my two best Pokemon work on the beach. Um, and then whatever else I need to like rearrange to focus on meals. And I do think I, I also I need I need a berry finding totodile. So that's another reason I would go to beach in this in this situation when the not only will we know that it will be set to curry. Curry will be multiplied by one point five. So your meals will be more. I I remember having a conversation with Bobby, I think after we recorded um one of the podcasts where we were talking about Raiko or not Raiko. It was it was some event that was boosted. I think it was like the Valentine's Day event or something. I can't remember. It was a it was a meal boosted event and I was like, "Oh, I didn't even focus on berries this week. I just focused on ingredients." Mm-hmm. And I think it's the same here too. So because we know that it's going to be curry, it's going to be 1.5, even though I don't have a berry finding totodile, you're just going to get so much more from cooking. So focusing on which ingredients you want to make meals, even if those Pokemon don't match up, like I probably will bring Victory Bell because Victory Bell just brings so much tomato, uh, potato. And I think potato goes into curry. I'd have to look at the list, but sounds about right. Yeah. Like not matching the berries, but getting the actual ingredients you need Mm -hmm. to me always seems way more important during these kind of events. I will say if you have a big enough bag for your ingredients, if you can carry enough ingredients, uh, you can make it through a good chunk of the week, even with a good camp ticket, even making meals where your pot is leveled up and you can fit a ton of ingredients in there. You can make it through a good chunk of the week without any ingredient gathering Pokemon. Oh, just because just having saved up, you mean like yeah. having saved up previously yes. and then just allowing like the regular ingredients being found and nothing like super boosted or anything. I mean, you just don't need to find ingredients for probably half the week because you have 500 ingredients to start with. Oh, right, right. 500 it's or all about more. that pre-gaming. It's all about <laughs> yeah, that pre-gaming. Yeah, you got pre-game. <laughs> like, I want my first three meals Pokemon on Monday. And you can gathering the right berries, and you can have all the ingredients th- for the right meals. Sure, sure. Yeah, I want my first three meals on Monday to be, like, the best meals I can make. So my Monday night going into Tuesday isn't, like, Bellsprout, Pichu, Bellsprout, <laughs> Ekans. <laughs> yeah, no. You got to start your week strong. It's just, like... Just like any Monday, right? You start that Monday strong and the rest of the week and work itself out. It does say you will meet, you may meet certain shiny Pokemon. 
But I feel like when there's a shiny boost, it it clearly it will state that the shiny boost is there. So I don't know why the words you may meet certain shiny Pokemon. Mm-hmm. I think they've used this wording before. Yes. I feel like I've only been a part of one event where there were boosted shinies, of which I didn't get any, by the way. But uh, yeah. it, it like clearly st- <laughs> zero out of 10 event. Uh, no, it clearly stated that they were going to be like that. It was more likely that they would be shiny in the yeah. news update. Before you start applying, there was a big event where it was like Absol is boosted and Bulbasaur is bo- like they listed like six Pokemon that were more likely to be shiny. And they said mm-hmm. that I'm just saying in this situation, they're saying you may meet certain shiny Pokemon. Yeah. Also, it's weird that they sang it if it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it, yeah, it's under bonuses. So maybe I don't know. Maybe there's just a general shiny boost. I yeah, I have. I've I've played this game every day. Haven't missed a day. I I I've played since day one. I have had eight shinies since day one, and I saw somebody on threads say that they like i just got my 40th shiny yeah. <laughs> jesus well i'm gotta say i'm surprised that you only have eight shinies because i've only been playing for what 10 weeks maybe like two and a half months and i have five shinies uh like not that far behind you and you've been playing for a lot longer than i have but it's i mean it's, it's... rng right yeah, yeah RNG, it's all so. the rng yeah hannah's I hannah's think... about to reveal she has like 30 shinies I don't have 30, but I think I have more than either of you. I'm just waiting for the game to load because it's stuck on that now loading screen. And they're all shiny Riolu. <laughs> right because the she doesn't leave Topala, so they're I, nothing but Riolu. I only have one shiny Riolu. <laughs> See, Two I know of my shinies are Atkins. <laughs> what am I going to oh, do no. with that? <laughs> yeah, I have um, one, two, three, four, eight. 12, oh. 14 shinies. Jeez. Two God. of them are Jigglypuff. Are any okay. of them good Jigglypuffs, though? They're almost good Jigglypuffs, <laughs> which is why I haven't used them. <laughs> Would they be almost good if they weren't shiny? No, they'd probably be like... <laughs> they'd be bad. right no, to the trash just... can if they weren't. <laughs> they don't have the right natures, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. That's Bad a... nature can ruin a whole Pokemon in this game. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Neutral nature uh, is actually, like, kind of okay in this game. <laughs> like, I would take yeah. a neutral over. I, yeah, when I see that, I'm like, yes! <laughs> like, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, we do not know what Cramorant will do um, in the game. They are listing it as a flying-type Pokemon, which is, like, really interesting, because... I don't know, Cramorant always screams water to me, but this game is really lacking on flying types currently. Not it's that there bird. aren't like 500 flying type Pokemon in the actual like series that they could easily introduce, but they're like, let's take the water bird and make it flying. But it's just a fine. bird. <laughs> it screams it is a bird. flying to me because it has wings and flies. Yeah, but it's always swimming. Its whole thing is diving under the water and catching the fish. But it's a bird. <laughs> Have you ever seen a cormorant dive under the water? The, no. the bird it's based on? Does they swim. Dive? They actually Does, swim. That's fine. That's totally understandable. I'm just saying, like, if something screams, if something is water and another type, and it's going to scream something at me, a bird is going to scream flying at me. Ah, uh, that, that's true. <laughs> I do think, isn't cormorant water? No, it's flying water. Um... Which is, I think a lot of birds are the flying is the secondary type. Yeah, like I think yeah, it is it's be, like normal flying. Yes. Because there's never been like an only flying like um so like in Pokemon Go, the background of a Pokemon is based on its uh yeah, primary it's type. Based on its first type, and there are so yeah. few that have the flying background. The first one was Tornadus because it was flying only. And but there is no bat. other flying Pokemon, I think. I think there's no other primary flying Pokemon before Tornadus in Pokemon. Yes, Tornadus is the... It's Tornadus, and then Tornadus and Rookity and Corvusquire mm-hmm. are the only pure flying Pokemon. And then yep. Noibat, Corviknight, Cramorant, Bombardier, and Flamigo are flying first. 
then their secondary type. Yep. And then every other flying Pokemon, which is a lot of them, <laughs> <laughs> flying is always secondary. So that would be like your Pidgeys, Skarmory, Lugia, Ho-Oh, Swablu, Starly. Are there, are there any Pokemon in sleep where they aren't their primary type? So when they've become just one type, they aren't their primary because I'm pretty sure that's how they. That just seems how they base it. Is it Altaria primary type. would be? Wait, yes. Is Altaria flying dragon or is it? Dragon Altaria flying? turns dragon. Altar. Oh, Altaria. Okay, so Swablu is flying. normal flying, yeah. but it is flying in the game. Oh, so it's, mm-hmm. its sure. first type would okay. be normal, and then when it evolves, it's one of the Altaria line is one of the few pokemon in pokemon sleep where when it evolves it changes type completely and it changes to dragon there is no dragon island so if you have a good swablu maybe don't evolve it until the dragon island gets introduced (laughs) you got that experience there don't you steve (laughs) sure do (laughs) i sure do have that experience Okay, well then, well, Swablu right there does it then, because Swablu's secondary type is flying, and it's flying in sleep. So. I want to say, when they introduced Dedenne in Pokemon Sleep, they made a big deal about how Dedenne was going to have a new ability. Um, Maybe I'm wrong on that? Did they? Yes. They in said, the announcement, uh, they did that? Yeah, in the, in, I have the announcement here. It was uh, February 28th. Uh, it seems that Dedenne will be spotted on green grass and near Lapis Like side. Dedenne's main... Oh, no, this is this is announcing that Dedenne's main skill is a new main skill. I'm pretty sure they, that they said, though, Dedenne was getting a main skill and people were speculating what it would do. I c- Maybe I'm misremembering, but I feel like if Cramorant was going to have something like brand new, they would, like, hype it up. So I don't know what Cramorant, like to me, if I was to guess what Cramorant would have, I think increasing the cooking pot size would make sense. Like we have so many ingredient finders and I don't, Cramorant does not seem like a Pokemon that would regen energy to other things. No, I not. <laughs> no, I would almost guess ingredient finder, but we do have a lot of those and we don't have a lot of the ones that increase your pot size. Like two that increase your pot, increase your pot size, right? Uh, and Glaceon, oh. Glaceon, Magnezone, and Flareon, I think, are the only three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like Nine Tails and Vulpix healing people, like, to me, makes sense. Like, Victory Bell healing itself, like, makes sense because, like, plants can photosynthesize. I'm like trying to justify. I'm Where really doing some mental like gymnastics. Plants right are now. not regenerative. You just, like, I just, you, like, I just <laughs> don't see. Like, like ah, no, Victory Bell gets like ingrain. It gets like Giga Drain. It gets like a lot mm-hmm. of things that can heal. Oh, it. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just don't see how Cramorant would like heal somebody else. So, what are your options then? Your options are like critical hit chance, which only Dedenne has. You have Ingredient Finder, which like a lot of Pokemon get Ingredient Finder. There are a Mm -hmm. lot of Ingredient Finders. And then you have um, Pot Size. And then everything else is like Healing. Or the one that's just a boost. The boost, like the, the, yeah. The boost, the, what is it? The the Snorlax boost. Oh, the the Charge uh, Strength. Charge yeah, I don't That's like Charge Strength Pokemons. I'm not like a huge <laughs> fan of really? Charge Strength. Okay, here Why we not? go. I got Charge Strength Small, Charge Strength Medium, Dream <laughs> Magnet. If they make Crammer in a Dream Magnet, I will <laughs> oh, probably <no>. cry. <laughs> <They're gonna do laughs> but I will also invest everything I have into Crammer in <laughs> at the same time. So Charge Strength Small, Charge Strength Medium, Dream Magnet, Energizing Cheer, which is just... Sylveon, Wigglytuff, Gardevoir. That's everyone, right? That gives it to everyone. Oh, sorry. Uh, Energizing Cheer, everyone. Yes. Energizing Cheer is just like um, Vulpix, Ninetales. Charge Strength Small, which is like Charge Strength, the other Charge Strength, except it's randomized. Dream Mm -hmm. Magnet, again, which is random. Because there's Dream Magnet that is just 
obtain 88 dream shards, but then there's dream magnet, dream shard, magnet, whatever, which is 44 to 176. The, these are really bad names for the record. <laughs> there's extra helpful, which I feel like Cramorant's too dumb of a Pokemon to be extra helpful. It just doesn't make sense, <laughs> like thematically. <laughs> There's nothing helpful about Cramorant. <laughs> There's Ingredient Magnet. There's Cooking Power, which only Dedenne has, uh, which also would be good. I feel like Cooking Power to, uh, or, or sorry, not Cooking Power. Oh, sorry. Cooking Power is what is Glaceon, yeah. Magnezone, Flareon. Metronome, which obviously doesn't make any sense. Tasty Chance, that's only Dedenne. And then Helper Boost, which is Helper Boost is Raikou, Entei, Arcanine. So I have a question about Tasty, because I don't have a Dedenne. Uh, no matter how hard I try, <laughs> no Dedenne. Um, how, so I know with like the ingredient or the, the pot where you can make the pot bigger for your next meal, if you trigger that multiple times before your next meal, it just adds on, right? Mm -hmm. So like... If my Flareon triggers three times before lunch, it will be mine's level one. So instead of seven ingredients, it will be 21 ingredients added because it's each time. Does that do anything with Dedenne's? Like with the critical, does it make it like more likely to be critical every time yep. it triggers? It builds up until you get a extra tasty meal. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. It's so good. Or until <laughs> the weekend. That's so good. <laughs> what? I Make sure you have say. a master biscuit yeah, for when you, you see a Dedenne. A for Dedenne. It makes so I much always sense switch to Dedenne on Sunday. Because you already wow. get 20%. And then Dedenne can go all day. So it just mm -hmm. makes the... Because I'll, I'll, I'll let... Like, I ran Magnazone all week, right? Because I wanted mm -hmm. a bigger pot. And same thing, same thing, Bobby. I would hit, I would hit like, main skill, like, twice before a meal. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm adding, like... 14 extra ingredients every meal um and i didn't run a good camp ticket so my pot size was like a little bit smaller than i'd like but then there's no point in running magnezone on sunday because your pot's already like huge on sunday mm -hmm. right and so i just switched magnezone out for dedenne and then just like like i my first meal of the day was crit because it was a instead of a 20 percent chance it was a 24 percent chance well my first meal of the day today was also crit, even though I don't have a Dedenne. So that was cool. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> slow down. But... <laughs> there is a higher chance on Sundays. Yeah, right. Um, that's. Oh, when are they going to introduce trading to Pokemon Sleep so I can get a Dedenne <laughs> from someone? Because there's like, no way for me to get one. Look, I've been on Lapis all week. Not a single Ralts, not a single Dratini, not a single Stuffle, not a single Dratini, or not Dratini, Dedenne. <laughs> What am I even doing on Lapis? <laughs> I woke up this morning to three Squirtles and two War Turtles. <laughs> I'm Master Rank 3. Gosh. If I wanted that, I would have went to Cyan Beach. Well, yeah. you are going to go to Cyan Beach. So <laughs> You're right. Get ready. <laughs> I can't wait for two weeks of no Dedenne because I'm going to be on beach for two weeks. <laughs> <sighs> I'm Master Balling Cramorant. Unless, <laughs> unless, unless they announce that... <laughs> There's a Cramorant incense coming for one of the missions. So. Yeah, but I, I'm almost positive Cramorant will be the same difficulty to catch as Dedenne or Kangaskhan yeah. or Pinsir. Oh, are they? Are they? Which means a lot. if you. A lot. Yeah. So Dedenne is. If you have the premium biscuit, which is four, four times three is 12, but I think you need 16 to catch Dedenne. Yeah. So you need, to, you need to have it be hungry. Hit your premium, have a great ball, and then have a Pokeball. And yeah. you got to hope after you give it the great ball, it's not going to be full. full. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is that's what happened. That is what happened with my pincer. It just happened to be hungry, and so and then I was able to get it all with the premium biscuit, great ball, Pokeball, Pokeball. Yeah, it's 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 real rough. I'm sure eventually they'll introduce a, like uh, an Ultra Ball. It would just make sense later down in the line. It's real rough. Both of you say well on the premium while having access to the premium biscuit and the great balls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because a, a free player cannot get great balls at all. Unless you saved up Ryko biscuits. Nope. Wait, so in, what? In our store, Bobby, we can buy five great balls a month. Yeah. 
There's nothing like that in the free store. There's no great balls you can oh, buy. I've never even realized that. It's mm-hmm. it's terrible. So if you <laughs> run, if you burn through all your great balls, you, and you're halfway through the month, you have to like wait. And then if you're free, you don't even get the option. Mm-hmm. That's wow. That is <laughs> like pay to win. Jeez. <laughs> I don't it's, know what I'm winning, but it's a whole different something. morning every time when you're on the premium. <laughs> okay, so or, oh, this is a question <laughs> I know I'm going to get hate for, I think. But what do you get in the morning? You don't get a. I mean, obviously, you don't get a premium biscuit because they like, get they get their bis- you, your biscuits three instead of four, right? Yeah. So yours oh, is nine okay. instead of twelve, technically. That's yeah. not, I was hungry. That's not too bad. But... I mean, it's basically just a great biscuit that we get for free right once a day right. but huh. we can't yeah we we can only get the normal poke biscuits or a master biscuit wow here's my strategy. Um, i'm gonna master biscuit i'm gonna i'm gonna buy there's gonna be a kramer instance to buy for sure because that always is yeah. i have enough gems so i'm gonna get whatever that has i'm gonna pop kramer incense night one master ball it as soon as it shows up unless it's like hungry if it's already hungry i'm not gonna waste a master ball on it obviously it's not gonna be hungry because that's my luck I'm going to master ball it and then I'm going to like work up to get a second one. I'm going to master ball the second one and then hope that like I see another one before the week is over. Wait, hold on. How many master biscuits do you have? I always keep one on me okay. at all times. So since it's a new month, I can buy another one. Got it. I never Got hold it. two though. It seems like overkill. Oh, Steve, you don't even know what Cranberry has. You're like, they're like, there's no reason to master to master biscuit an ente or a rye. You're correct, any of these correct, because it's legendaries. not a Cranberry, <laughs> Bobby. Cranberry with no with no knowledge of what it does, and you're like, I'm gonna master biscuit two of them. Exactly, unless it, unless it's Dream Shard, then that's all out the window. <laughs> if it's Dream Shard, we're done for. <laughs> Dedene, Dedene is Master Ball worthy. I yes. will die on that hill. Dedene is maybe the most Master Ball worthy yeah. Pokemon in all of sleep. I agree with that now. I remember my confusion <laughs> when I first started listening, or like dealing with sleep, but I totally understand it now. <laughs> I don't think Cramorant is Master Ball worthy to most people. It is to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's take a break, and then when we come back, we got some FBI news, so we will be right back. And we are back from our break. Um, this is off Pokey Beach. FBI. <laughs> didn't think this podcast would get any more weird. Uh, F, this is actually, this was, uh, last month, but we didn't cover it. FBI arrests two men for forging $2 million of PSA graded Pokemon and sports cards. Uh, (laughs) the, the FBI has announced (laughs) charges against two Washington men accused of forging PSA graded Pokemon and sports card Sports cards resulting in over $2 million in losses for victims across the United States. The pair of men have been charged with wire fraud and conspiracy to commit wire fraud. If convicted, both men will carry a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. Um, they altered PSA label. I'm not going to read their names. You can read the article on Pokey Beach. It'll be linked in the, the show notes. Um, They altered and forged PSA labels to make the cards appear to have higher grades. The pair used fake identities to sell slabs at card shops, auctions, card shows, online marketplaces. Even the pair were informed their slabs were faked. They continued to sell them. Uh, The undercover law enforcement. I love how there was undercover police to buy a fake PSA 10 Venusaur from one of the men for $10,000. Uh, one, once the officer wired the money to the bank account, the card was shipped out. The transaction constituted as wire fraud or knowing, knowingly defrauding a victim of money. Uh, the article goes on 
And also, it's very funny that Poke Beach says recently GameStop has announced that they will buy PSA graded yeah. cards. <laughs> this is a weird like <laughs> way to end the article. <laughs> you gotta get that. You gotta get that link related. click at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I looked a little bit more into this, and uh, this is not the first time. I think I, I, I'm pretty sure it's both men, but one of the the dudes here had like already a history of fraud before this in like another market, and he yeah. just switched over to Pokemon and sports cards as his new fraud. <laughs> if you have the expertise, take take it across <laughs> industries. I guess <laughs> when all you know is scamming people. You there just you adjust the scam. <laughs> I I don't know what you can do with this information besides like the FBI was investigating. Well, <laughs> the thing that's weird to me, and I guess it has to do with whether people, how in depth people get with purchasing. So I don't I don't buy slabs. I don't like to get the the graded cards. Like I just. I'd rather have them in a binder or in like a different glass, like a uh, protective case if I want, but I don't really, it's expensive for one to get them graded. And unless you're planning to, I feel like unless you're planning to resell them, or if you just specifically like collecting specific grades, um, then I'd rather just keep it in like a different case or whatever, but you can like look up the nut, like every label has a specific number that is for that grade. And I believe you can look up on PSA's website and verify, like you can put that number in and it should verify that grade. And so you would think when people are buying these graded, um, these graded uh, cards that they would be, you know, verifying that against it in some way. But Counterpoint. I guess if you're, I guess if you're just buying them at a shop or something or at a show, you... <laughs> You kind of assume. You kind of assume when it's in the PSA labeled um, case and everything. Counterpoint: People are lazy. Yeah. <laughs> and how? I don't. I you. No disagreement with you, Bobby. There's. I bought. I bought a PSA card in Japan. I don't buy PSA cards at all. I own three, I think, and one of them was gifted to me. And the other one was just a Cramorant I bought off eBay for like $20. It was like a PSA 9 Cramorant. And I was like, <laughs> free shipping, 20 bucks. Cool. <laughs> so I own like three PSA cards. I'm with you, Bobby. I, I'm i not super into like collecting slabs. I They take up a lot of space. Like the binder is much easier to put everything in, zip it up, fold it away. I know where they all are. I'm, I, I have no clue right now where those other two slabs are. The only reason I know where the current slab is I bought is because I haven't unpacked my luggage. It's still in my <laughs> luggage. <laughs> but I was like, I was, you know, you're uh, you're in a different country. The dollar is really strong compared to the yen. So what, when I saw it, I was like, oh, man, I do really like this card. It was a Japanese exclusive card. It was the Galler friend card. It was oh, like nice. all the Galler people, Japanese exclusive. It was PSA 10. Uh, I looked up the price on eBay, and it was already thirty dollars cheaper in person than it was on eBay. And I was like, mm -hmm. and and the dollar was already really strong. And I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? Not huge into PSA. I think this is a cool like souvenir because I like it was like the first card shop I found in Sendai, which was actually right across the hallway from the Pokemon Center in Sendai. And so I bought it. So at if it no was a point, PSA 10, yeah, did you look up the number? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. At no point did I ever consider looking up the number. <laughs> like, the thing I did look up was, what is market price on this card? Because I don't right. know. So I went to, like, eBay to, like, see recently sold auctions and stuff. But I would, I would probably argue a lot of people don't even consider looking up the number. I do think it's impressive. I don't know how they did it, right? Like, they had to get their own slabs or break open slabs or just Photoshop new labels. And then. Yeah, there's, they did mention something in the article a little bit about it, but yeah, I mean, when it comes to, if they're trying to, if they had to break open the slabs, which I, I mean, people do it, they crack them open. I do not recommend it unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Cause good chance you will ruin the card doing that are the but... labels on the inside of the slabs yeah yes good okay yep yeah they're on the inside so you would have to 
I don't know. You'd have to crack that open. You'd have to also have another case to that would mimic it and then make your own label there somehow. But I guess, so I assume that however much you spent on yours was not $10,000 like this. No, it was like, it was literally like 60 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So for the record, it's not like I'm, (laughs) it's not like this was a very expensive card. It was like on eBay, it was like a hundred bucks, maybe 120. I was like, it's expensive. That's yeah. that's expensive if you think like what a pack of Pokemon cards costs and then, you know, what the other cards are individually worth. But I'm just thinking when you get up into the multiple thousands of dollars and they said they defrauded it by like $2 million. So I feel yeah, like there has to crazy. be some cards in there that were worth, I mean, that person, that undercover cop bought a $10,000 Venusaur off of the person. So I mean, again, lazy whatever you're just not thinking about it you don't think because like it's already in the psa slab that there is that's the certification in itself but when you're buying ten thousand dollar cards fifty thousand dollar cards things like that i feel like people would certify them in another way or like maybe double check but i mean i know people who will who when they're buying very expensive ones are will fly to the location or they'll have them fly out there to actually pick the card up in person and things like that rather than mm-hmm. um, you like ship it, right? Because I don't want to ship these really expensive cards. And I feel like if you're willing to get on a plane and fly to a location to buy the card, you would hopefully also be double checking that certification. According to the website of the Department of Justice, it looks like they did get <laughs> new card cases to put them in. So that sounds like they did crack open slabs or just put cards into slabs on their own right and they just create the then just create the fake label yeah yeah uh also keep in mind there's a huge price difference almost always between a psa 9 and a psa 10 yes Mm -hmm. so like i would i would guess that every single card they they sold for this two million dollars were psa 10s because just the price just skyrockets um yeah a a huge difference Uh, i mean like if you want to take the extreme you have that first edition charizard that was the most sought after one of the most sought after cards a psa 10 of that card at its height was like three hundred thousand dollars a psa 9 was thirty thousand so i mean it literally dropped that much just going from a 10 to a 9 so i mean Mm -hmm. those numbers are can be hugely different between um a 9 and a 10 and that's why I always hated like YouTuber break boxes because when when you buy into a break box they just they just assume or like they they present it as a way of like oh if this was a 10 this is how much it's worth. <laughs> uh-huh. And it's so hard to already get a 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's why people crack open packs right? or crack open the the PSA shell because they'll mm-hmm. send it so they'll send it it'll it'll they'll come back as a 9. And they'll crack it open. They'll send it again. Mm -hmm. And they'll do that until eventually somebody gives them a 10. Because there are guidelines. And before the YouTube, there's the same people every time we bring this up. They're like, there are guidelines. They have to. There's still an actual person that has to finalize a score. Mm-hmm. And again, to all those people that are like, well, they got to follow the guidelines. There's tons of TikToks. There's tons of Instagram videos. There's tons of just YouTube videos of people being like, took it took five times, but eventually they gave me a ten. Right. Yep. Like they'll that they'll keep sending the it in. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. that happened. That does happen all the time. And even though there are guidelines, it's still a human making the decision. And there may be there's going to be some there could be some difference there in how they're you know deciding, but. I will say like going to card shows and things to buy stuff as well, especially when you buy cards that are not graded, just like watch out on pricing. Cause sometimes people will also be like, they'll price it on, well, I looked this up and a PSA 10 was this much. So I'm selling this card for this much, even though (laughs) though it's not not graded, (laughs) not selling a PSA 10 card, you know? So um, just watch out for that when you're, when you're at card shows and things, not, not that they're not even that they're doing it maliciously, just that they're not maybe they're not as experienced and they're like looking up their own prices to sell their cards. Um, and this is usually when people are like selling their own collections and things like that more so than people who, whose career is, you know, selling cards. But uh, I've, I've been at shows literally where 
where people are selling cards and they're like, well, the PSA 10 is this much and this is how much I'm selling it for. You can't sell a card that uh, the PSA 10 number when it's not actually graded a PSA 10. <laughs> yeah, that is it. I mean, you really can if you want, I mean, but sure. don't do that. <laughs> um, $2 million is a crazy amount of money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He said he was well, did it, he did it before at least one of them had done it before. Yeah, I, so. I can't. I wish I wish I saved that that article or something about him. Um, it's, but it's previous work, it's, it's fine. It's pretty. Yeah, Link, it's pretty LinkedIn good. profile <laughs> resume. One of them actually is listed as having a fake profile on LinkedIn related to all of this. It's it's all it's all a thing. <laughs> Uh, the dark side of LinkedIn. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, this is off Bulba Garden. Although you could just go to PokemonCenter.com. Uh, there's a bunch of new stuff. Uh, uh, Pokemon Center is now in multiple areas: U.S., Canada, U.K., not Europe, and then Australia. Okay, hold on. Not the EU. <laughs> oh yeah, not the EU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Bobby. Confirm that. <laughs> Al was just about to type a novel in Slack. Thank you, Bobby, for correcting. <laughs> Have you? Did you guys see the prices for the Australian Pokemon Center? No. no. Are they? Oh, they're not good. They're not. Oh, no. <laughs> they're, it's so expensive. <laughs> oh. That's so sad. That's a bummer. <laughs> Speaking of expensive, uh, there are uh, Snorlax, Gengar, Charizard apparel that just got it added. Gen 1 strikes again. There are two new <laughs> denim jackets that are $200 each. Uh, some new hoodies, some new crop tops, uh, socks. $15 for a pair of socks I still think is highway robbery. Um, <laughs> just c- crazy to me. Uh, oh, also, before we get to the other thing, I have such a bone to pick. Okay, we're done being a positive Pokemon show. I'm so annoyed by this. <laughs> there are... if So there's a, if you type in the word Cramorant into pokemon center <laughs> oh no how does this go negative <laughs> grandma rant there is um there are the research posters and kramer mm-hmm. is on they're behind if you're watching the youtube video right now they are behind hannah she has mm. two of them behind her she has the the uh grass one and then she has the one that was exclusive to uh washington dc which was World. the fossil one yes yep and I, if i it's remember a slightly correctly, different poster set though the researcher ones are new and they look slightly different but they're very similar to the ones i have here yeah yes they're they're similar now more now you can i don't know why i'm on pokemon center uk right now you can go to <laughs> pokemon center and you can actually look up that poster that is behind Hannah, and you can see the price. Vile plume. Yeah. Uh, and I remember <laughs> what the price was because it was the same price as the one in Washington, D.C., which you bought in person, which you could only buy in person. And it was about $20. I think yeah. specifically on Pokemon Center, it was $18. Now, there are three new posters, one of them having Cramorant because it's a, it's the like water Pokemon or whatever. And they are charging fifty dollars for it. The for a poster. <laughs> is it the same? It doesn't size? even have the frame. It is the same size. It is eighteen by twenty four. It is the same exact size. It is the same like theme. Like Hannah's poster is very green. There's a little bit of yellow in there, but it's mostly green, mostly blue. If you look at the um the Cramorant one, it is it's a bunch of flying Pokemon. It's very blue. There's whites. There's darker blues. They're they're not one to one, but they're they're the same size. The description is exactly the same. It'll say material paper, country of origin, printed in the USA. Like this is insane. <laughs> like, first off, twenty dollars for a poster is pure profit. As somebody who, if you subscribe to our Patreon, you get a poster. There's not like a lot of like l- what what is it like. It's not very expensive to make a poster. It actually costs right. more money to ship a poster 
than it does to actually make the poster. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, and I think everyone knows that and everyone's fine with that because at the end of the day, like $20 on a poster is not that big of a deal, especially if it makes you happy and whatever. I mean, like, look at like plushes are like 15 bucks and they literally don't do anything. You just like put them somewhere and like, that's fine. It's not even like, and uh, now, now to bring up inflation, everything has gotten more expensive. It yeah, very like I, I get it. It sucks. Like back in my day, a twelve pack of soda used to be like three dollars and fifty cents. Now a twelve pack <laughs> of soda is like nine dollars. It's crazy. So like going from like twenty dollars to twenty five dollars would be like yeah, yeah, inflation. Five more dollars for the same poster. Fifty dollars is crazy. That is so. It's it's more than double. Yeah. Like I thought at first, it was like, oh, I I I feel like they were forty dollars, which is double. I'm pretty sure they were fifty. I thought that they included the frames, which still wouldn't be worth it. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, I got a forty percent off coupon to Michaels right now. I can get a frame. <laughs> 40 I have off. almost the exact same frames, and they came from Ikea for maybe $5 each. So, the posters behind me <laughs> also come from Pokemon Center. How much do you think each of those posters was? They are slightly smaller. They're 12 by 18, not 18 by 24. But how much do you think each of those posters was? I, I Weren't they like $10 a piece? And then you could get the whole set for like 50 They were $40 for all eight. Mm -hmm. So five dollars a poster, <laughs> forty <laughs> bucks for the whole collection, and they're still they're sold out now. But they are still that, so they have not changed the price on that. It is forty dollars for all eight posters, uh, five bucks a poster. The frames, everything else about those posters cost a lot more than the posters. They they didn't even hide the prices of the old posters. You can go on PokemonCenter.com <laughs> and you can see they were exactly. they're sold out, but listed for like twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. yeah, the new posters. I saw them. I thought, oh, I love these sets of posters. They're slightly different, but I would still love to have them and keep growing my set because I have the blue one, too. No, no. $150 for the new posters? No. Yeah, that's I mean, like, like <laughs> part of me thinks it has to be a pricing error. Even the Van Gogh ones weren't this expensive, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's in insane <laughs> i don't like looking at the other wall art and things on pokemon center i'm pretty sure until you get to the there's like some really expensive wall art on pokemon center that's done by like specific artists uh, aside from that i'm pretty sure this is like the most expensive <laughs> thing like wall art on pokemon Center are these posters okay now i i know feel free to comment on youtube uh that's fine I know that somebody's going to be like, well, the paper quality could actually be better. I don't know why I put a nerd voice on that. There, If there's one thing I know, and I don't know a lot, um, I, I, I went to Milwaukee Public Schools. But let me tell you, I have a degree in graphic design, and I had to take multiple printing classes. And I had to print posters and make posters and, like, work an actual, like, physical huge printer with, like, blue ink and black ink and pink ink. And I had to, like, watch how it printed. There ain't no difference in paper cost. Like, there <laughs> is a difference between like a a five cent piece of paper for a poster and like a dollar twenty, it, it, it that's it. There's like a ninety five percent ninety five cent difference in like paper quality. So to 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 price your poster at more than a hundred percent difference is absolutely insane. There is no paper out there unless that paper is like doing your taxes. Like, there's just nothing out there to justify that cost. I mean, there is a Pikachu in that Cramorant's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and they specifically, on the uh, description of the poster, they literally say, featuring Pidgeotto, Honchcrow, Decidueye, and more. Parentheses, including a cameo by Pikachu in Cramorant's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> All right, that's worth fifty bucks. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I'm a I'm the biggest Kramer and fan in the world. I would not spend fifty dollars on this poster. I just can't. Yeah, it's free shipping. 
I'm back in. <laughs> Uh, Bill the Bear has also announced its next Pokemon, which is Munchlax, who is cheaper than this poster. You can get Munchlax for $34 USD. Uh, you can get Munchlax with a Heavy Ball, a Tomato Berry Wristlet, a hoodie, a uh, Heavy Ball hoodie, a voice clip containing five Munchlax sounds for $66. Um you like Munchlax, uh, you can you can do Build a Bear. And then finally, in uh, merchandise news, Squishmallows has a new collab with Fue Coco and Belly Bolt. This was shown at NAIC, which just happened this weekend. Uh, if I'm gonna stand on my soapbox real quick, don't buy Squishmallows. The 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 Squishmallows is produced by Jazzwares which Jazzwares makes a lot of different Pokemon things. And you can look this up. You can you can you can type in like CEO of Jazzwares. I'm just going to tell you he's not a great person. He sucks. <laughs> he's said some real terrible things in the last couple months. Uh and there are other Pokemon alternatives out there. There are all there are other Squishmallow alternatives out there. Um, so if you really like Fue Coco, PokemonCenter.com has multiple different Fue Cocos you can purchase. So Yes, and I'm sure some of them are plenty squishy. <laughs> In fact, if you look at the Build a Bear, to go back to Build a Bear real quick, the Build a Bear reveal of the Munchlax, I think had a little slight like there's a Fue Coco in that picture. Like, um, not to say that it's next, but like, there's like a Fue Coco in that picture, and it's like maybe teasing like an upcoming Build a Bear. So, anyway, it's just you have other options <laughs> for, <laughs> for, for, for Fue Coco. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go down a, like a rabbit hole of why I think the the CEO of Jazzwares is a terrible dude, but it's out there. It's very, it's there are a lot very, of reasons. It's very easy to find, and I, you know, it sucks because I saw a lot of. People like real like people are into Squishmallows. I totally get it. Um, I've never purchased a Squishmallow. Uh, I've been sent a free Squishmallow by the Pokemon Company when they first were announced, and I was definitely really excited. And I think it's really easy to collect something or to be excited for something. But for me personally, when I find out that the person or company behind something is terrible it's really easy for me to write that off and i i use like chick-fil-a as a really good example like chick-fil-a is is not a great company i think it's very well known that chick-fil-a is 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 not supportive of the lgbt community Actively and the great harmful. thing about the and the great thing about that is there's plenty of places to get chicken so it's really easy for me to be like i gosh i think the last time i had chick-fil-a was like eight years ago and that was before I knew that. And as soon as I knew that, I was like, okay, it's easy. It's very easy to go to Popeye's or KFC or literally unlimited chicken places, local chicken places in your area. That's a decision I made because, again, it's not an inconvenience to me. It's so easy to find different chicken. It's very easy to find different Pokemon merchandise. <laughs> so, like, if you didn't know that the CEO of of Squishmallows is a terrible person. Now you do, or you, you can you can you can look up what he said exactly, and you can make that decision. But uh, I can't. I, I now that I know that, or now that I knew that, I can't not know that. So I'm not going to buy Squishmallows. That's very easy for me. It's also very, again, easy to find different pokemon plushes there's a lot of them out there there's a ton of different pokemon plushes out there yeah. yeah and um speaking of that one thing that i think we didn't mention before with pokemon plushes is uh they recently announced that the generation six of the pokemon sitting cuties is coming as well so even more options for pokemon plushes are <laughs> on their way any pokemon you can think of including <laughs> any form of Vivian, which is yes. really impressive. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm very excited for the person to order all ten furfurs. <laughs> I think there's what nineteen Vivions? Twenty. Yeah, twenty. Or twenty. Twenty. I think. And then there's nine haircuts and then one normal furfru. There was one item and I cannot remember which there's another Pokemon in Kalos with uh, multiple forms, I believe, and it didn't look like they were getting. They were putting them all out, and I can't remember what it was. Wasn't Someone it mentioned Xerneas? it online. Uh, no. Nope. Xerneas see, has two forms. I see. Yeah, I see the ten percent and the fifty percent Xerneas. Oh wait, no, Xerneas. Sorry. Yeah, they um, they have. Thinking of Zygarde. <laughs> yeah, Xerneas just has one form. I have to I have to look it up. I forget who it was. There was someone mentioned it, and and then there was. They zoomed in and they're like, oh, there's only one of these. There aren't all, all the Pumpkaboo forms. only has one of each, which is kind of weird. Yeah. It might have been Flabebe. Oh. Like Flabla- Flab- Flabla-Bla. They do only Flab-Bay have one Bay of Flabebe didn't line. get all of the colors or yeah. something, all of the forms. Just yeah, the there's one, only the red Flabebe there. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. So, that is weird. Sorry if you are if you want to collect every Flabebe, but but yeah, you can get every Vivion <laughs> and every Furfru. That is really weird about Flabebe because they are different. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't, I mean, maybe they're coming. They just didn't have them in the picture. But yeah, there was only the red one. And there were no Megas. No Megas. Yeah. True. So I wonder if they'll save Megas for like a different release. Like maybe next year during a specific (laughs) game that might have Megas coming back. (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. There's no might there. That's happening. (laughs) There was the logo. <laughs> all right, let's take one more break and then uh, we'll do all, uh, we'll cover, we'll finish up the show with our Pokemon Go news. So we will be right back. And we are back from our break. Uh, there is a new season in Pokemon Go. And on top of that, before we get to the new season, uh, there is a New Zealand event. It's not the event you think it would, that New Zealand deserves to be fair. <laughs> Um, it's something yeah it's something Mm -hmm. uh niantic will be at the i shouldn't say niantic pokemon go will be at the armageddon expo auckland winter 2024 uh which will take place from june 14th to june 16th i don't actually know how many listeners we have in new zealand i know a couple uh but there will be an event where lures will last for three hours during this uh, during the dates I just listed, uh, except for golden lures. Uh, lures will have a chance of attracting unknown A, uh, two times buddy catch assist chance, which I feel like that's the first time I've ever read that, but probably not the first time Niantic's done that. Um, I, haven't... I don't recognize it. Yeah, I'd never seen that description before. It's kind of exciting, honestly. Yeah, I know what the bu- for those that don't know what the buddy catch assist is. It's when you get the when you unlock the second heart on your buddy, and you like miss your throw, the pokeball will come back, and then your like buddy will like hit it Bounce again. It back, yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, and then half Stardust cost for trades. Uh, the event themed research will give you encounters with Hisuian Growlithe, Larvitar, Audino, Axew, Furfru, and Jagma O. All of those can be shiny except for Jangma O, which will be next year's Gumi <laughs> for <laughs> community. The shiny day. is getting unlocked one month later at the Global Go Fest. Yeah. But yeah. then yes, it'll it'll probably have a community day next year. Um and then you can earn there'll be other tasks where you can earn XP, Stardust, Pikachu, Candy, encounter with Pikachu wearing a red party hat. So I think it was like a month ago on this podcast where I was like, Niantic should do more of these like smaller events for people who these conventions and stuff. So they're doing this one. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's in New Zealand. Yeah. (laughs) And there's an, and there's an unknown spawning. This is like back in the day, we talked about like how they used to have like comic con. They had all the unknown spawning for all the letters and stuff. And, so it's cool that you have the unknown A. Uh, another a tip as well is it's half 
you said it's half Stardust cost for trades. And during this season, you get one additional special trade a day. So if you want a chance at some cheaper special trades, you'll get, you know, you could have two per day if you're uh, during and a half cost during this event. They can trade themselves Relicanth all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like these are really good bonuses for an event, honestly. The half Stardust mm -hmm. cost and the lore modules, those are really good for an event where you want to have a bunch of people playing and have other people see that and pick up the game for the first time in a while. Yeah, and it's like it's not so good where people are like, "Oh, how dare they!" It's like good <laughs> enough, but not like super incredible. It's a good balance. Yeah. Uh, Shared skies is the new season. They are doing free monthly timed research for the this year, uh, which was weird. <laughs> because <laughs> i definitely went to the store and i was like where's the paid research that i'm supposed to buy for the wow. month they've really got you <laughs> they already, did that you just automatically went to the shop like all right where's the ten dollars i'm spending <laughs> <laughs> all right now i think here's my wallet again see um, this is this is the difference real quick about s sleep and go is that sleep you just you're paying ten dollars a month or whatever fifty of every six months, but you don't even mind, right? You're just like ah, yes, like premium ten dollars a month with Go. You went to the shop to spend the money, <laughs> but you weren't happy about it. It was like <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you knew you had to do it, but you didn't want. To. It's, it's like, like what? paying your bills. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's like, I got to do this. <laughs> got to give them this money this month. <laughs> I need my internet, so I got to pay the bill. But like, you know, <laughs> want to. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I would assume that like the reason they're doing this isn't because people are mad about the Avatar or anything. I think the reason they're doing this is because they know that summertime is their best time. So by giving people something more to do during their best time, they will end up making more money in the long run instead of like gatekeeping those people out of being like, I don't know if this $10 is worth it or not. Um, not that like the $10 has ever been worth it to begin with. It's always been like pretty <laughs> mediocre. Yeah. Well, that would make sense, though, considering the time when they usually have the most paid research tickets is the winter. Yeah. Right. Yep. Well, you also have to think about what the tasks are during this research. So, like, you know, step one is, like, hatch 15 eggs, which <laughs> obviously you can do with just the free incubator. But they also introduced, like, a $5 bundle for three super incubators the other day. And what did I do? Of course I went and bought the $5 <laughs> bundle for Bobby. three super, incubator, super incubators. So, like, you know, they're making their money, like you said, like, they're making their money in other ways here. <laughs> Uh, there will also be Pokestop showcases uh, from Saturday to Sunday, as well from Monday to Tuesday, um, which I I'm still big fan of showcases personally. I still think they're really great. I don't honestly think there's really any downsides to them. I have, I, I have really nothing bad to say about showcases. Have we talked on this podcast about, have you talked on this podcast about what you get for 100 showcase wins? No, we that, never talked about the Pikachu that you the, get. You get that special yeah. Pikachu wearing like the what is what is it like? What is there a Cosplay name for that Pikachu. costume? It's the, yeah, it's the scientist one, right? The scientist Pikachu. Yeah. I just didn't know if there was like an official name for that costumed Pikachu, but it's like a scientist. It's got the lab coat and the glasses on mm -hmm. um, for one hundred showcase wins. I will tell you right now that I am not I haven't found a good place to do showcases where yeah. there aren't 180 people also in the That's what the we thing. get for living in cities. I have never won a showcase. Yeah, I've never won a showcase. So people were showing You've the never showcase won? metal. Never. I've like, never I had the I don't have the metal. metal. Yeah. <laughs> I've never won one. <laughs> yeah, I, so I think maybe sad. I've gotten in third once. Maybe. I think I'm in third right now for one. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that's going to change to like 12th before it's over. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, showcases yeah. definitely benefit people who live in the middle of nowhere. That's for sure. It's like Which the I'm one okay thing. With. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Seriously. Like... But also about. I've won seven. Okay. Nice. Well, there, there's, that's something. That's almost you know, ten percent of the way. I guess it's seven percent of the way there to the to the Pikachu. But yeah. uh, I also about six months ago, nine months ago, right before showcases came out. So maybe what was it a year ago that they came out? Maybe or within the last year. Yeah. Um, I decided I was collecting too many different things, so I was gonna throw out all of my. I had been collecting. I kept every double XL um Pokemon that I had. Uh, you know, found, and then I decided to throw them all out. And like four days later, they're like, we're introducing this thing where it's good to have Jumbo Pokemon. So that's not great. Um, obviously, when we're recording this, it is Gumi Community Day, June 9th. Uh, this podcast will come out on June 10th. Uh, June 22nd will be Community Day Classic, uh, which will be Cyndaquil. And then July 21st will be a new community day. They haven't said what it was is yet, but I'm assuming that's going to be Poplio. I'm hoping. That's, um, the, that's the thought, I think. And then if Poplio is not July, it'd probably be August, which August 31st. And thank goodness they decided not to do community day over worlds. That was such a nightmare last year. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is Worlds? Like the 16th, 17th, 18th? So it's like the week after that, I think, or something like that. Like I don't remember. Yeah. Um, there's new stickers. Go Battle League Reset. Research breakthroughs. Your your options are Hisuian Growlithe, Larvitar, Audino, Axew, Furfru, and Jangma-O. All of these will be shiny, although Jangma-O will start um, during GoFest. So eventually it'll be shiny. It's just not shiny as of right now. Different Pokemon in the wild, different eggs. I could go through all of this stuff, but like literally nothing is that exciting. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I will say, with speaking of Jangmo, we talked about this earlier, but let everyone's reminder be, and sorry for the people that went to Sendai already, that you don't need to get, like, there will be a community day of like, Jangmo O next year. Like Gumi's community day today is the reminder that next year they will be a community day <laughs> of the Pokemon that's very popular at the Go Fest this year. Yes, so... but also this is weirdly only a reminder for global Go Fest this year. Oh, that's They're true. Not it's not doing actually Jangmo it hasn't O been in the local. Yeah. yeah. So one thing I did appreciate last year at Go Fest was that Gumi was available in the wild. Like I caught two shiny Gumi in the wild at GoFest last year. Whereas the years prior, like Axew and the previous ones, it was only it was in like raids. Raid only. So you had to raid if you wanted to try for the shiny. Mm -hmm. Um so that was nice to not that they actually expanded that a little bit and had it in the wild. I, I feel forget like for Axew was in the wild too. Was Axew in the wild? It was if it was, it was super bit. rare in yeah. the wild. I feel like Gumi was a little bit more common. Last yeah. year, I think in, in Gumi did feel more common. Yeah, is Jengmo O going to be in the wild for GoFest Global or only in raids? I because don't think they've said. They also said that Umbreon and Espeon were supposed to be in three star raids during Sendai. Let me tell you what didn't exist: Umbreon and Espeon in three star raids, no not way. a single one. Really, there there was no raids of Umbreon and Espeon that entire weekend. That's weird. They were in the wild, which was very nice. That's um, better, I guess. It is better, but that was That's very weird. that <laughs> literally on their website. <laughs> Remember that sticker that I got for free <laughs> by buying something in a store, <laughs> and I scanned the QR code because I thought it was going to give me something, and it took me to Niantic's website to say like, "This is GoFest Sendai." And I was like, yep, still says that Umbreon and Espeon are supposed to be in three-star rates. <laughs> <laughs> they are not here. So not it only like... did it not give you something, it sent you to misinformation. <laughs> yeah, that misinformation being Niantic themselves. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like Jengma O, along with being in one-star raids, is supposed to be in one of the habitats in the wild. So cool. we'll see if that's right. 
<laughs> the following bonuses are one additional special trade per day, which is what Bobby mentioned earlier. Trainers above level 31 and higher will have a higher chance of receiving XL candy when exploring with their buddy, not catching Pokemon, walking with your buddy, and then increased XP for first catch of the day. Um, I, I feel like the the special trade is is really great. One additional special trade is always very good. I think. Um, I don't think the other ones are that thrilling or exciting. Uh, no, like XL candy is still such a grind and still like pretty niche. Like I think I only have like two three Pokemon at level fifty, and it's only because I think to get from like level forty seven to forty eight, you needed to get three Pokemon to level fifty as like the task. Nope. Is it only three? Okay. Yeah, it's only three. Yeah, it's only three. Hmm. Um, and part of the reason it's it's like I have the candy. I just don't want to spend the stardust. I'd rather just save the stardust for trades. <laughs> right. So. I I feel like unless you are someone who does PvP or like to raid with the minimal amount of people to try for, um, like certain raids with like the the most the least people you can do that with then you don't need to power your Pokemon up past level 40. Like, you don't need to use XL Candy. Like, yeah, I have had kind of the same level 40 Pokemon since getting to level 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah. And they just continuously, like, they raid fine. And, you know, I'm not missing out on any raids or anything because I don't have level 50 Pokemon or something above level 40. Level um, 50 is a very PvP thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. For sure. So... I get it if you, especially if you are on, if you play, if you're PvP and you do that, but otherwise, yeah, I don't think XL candies are. I mean, I like getting them. I think that it's important for them to be more accessible and be able to let trainers level their Pokemon up to 50. I just don't think this is a particularly good bonus for that. Yeah. yeah. I honestly, I still really miss holding 40 gifts. Yeah. Mm hmm. When you have a friends list, as long as you can have a friends list, yeah, you're not able to send gifts to everyone as frequently otherwise. Also, like I normally send gifts uh, on like public transportation or like right before I go to bed, like when I'm like when I'm out and about doing raids or catching Pokemon, I'm just not stopping to send gifts because it's time consuming. Right. So it's like mm -hmm. when I'm ready to send gifts, it's it's usually I'm not around any stops. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have like double that to be like, OK, before I go to bed, I'm going to send all my gifts. And then tomorrow when I go out and play, I'll be able to replenish versus wow. you actually I don't. Send, so I don't even know. Why no, I'm you don't. About. I don't send <laughs> gifts to anybody. <laughs> I'm so I'm bad. cold hearted here. I'm such a bad friend in Pokemon yeah. Go. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think when when I so think am I though, for the record, I think it's easier to send and open gifts when you know that you're going to see that person. Mm -hmm. So oh, for sure. So I'm 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 also pretty bad at it, right? But like for me, it was really easy to send gifts while I was in Japan because I was on like the train and I was getting really cool gifts and I wanted to send people Japanese gifts, right? Mm -hmm. And I wasn't driving because like now that I'm back in America. I got to drive everywhere, so I can't I can't send gifts and drive at the same time, but I can definitely sit on a 20 minute train ride and send 20 gifts right. before that train rides over. Um, but like because I'm going to see so many people at New York Go Fest, it's like, OK, I prior I like renamed all those people New York. I'm making sure that they get gifts. I'm opening gifts. And then ideally, if we're already four star friends, it's like, can we get lucky before New York? Because. That would be great. I would love to <laughs> do more lucky trades in New York. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think. I think part of the problem for me is that if I need to do more of like that renaming, because what will happen is I'll add friends and then I won't remember like, oh, who is that? Who the, like, this yeah. is why yeah. you now, rename, you, know. you give them a nickname as soon as you add the friend. That way you can remember wh who they are. Yeah. If I, I have more a whole system for this. In, in this, then, you know, that would work well. But uh, you know me well enough to know I'm not doing that. <laughs> I rename people so I remember where I met them and what their actual name is. Yeah, no, that's that's it's the useful. smart way to do it. That's the smart way to do it. Um, I think that's I think that's pretty much it. Uh, this 
There should be a... I'll have to record one more podcast before I leave for Madrid. So whatever podcast goes up on the on the 17th might not have the latest or breaking news because I don't I just don't want to lug all my audio equipment. To, <laughs> I already have to lug enough equipment to a different country. <laughs> Although when I went through the airport last time, I could see my bag almost always gets flagged. Um, because a bunch of cables and a bunch of microphones kind of <laughs> don't look great in an x-ray scanner. <laughs> but I remember uh, when I was like leaving for Japan, my bag went through and the guy looked at me and then he looked back at the scanner and he looked at me and he looked back at the scanner and he goes, audio equipment? And I said, yeah. And then he was like, yes. And then he like <laughs> high fived the other security guard. Like he guessed correctly what was in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> that was a win for that person i guess <laughs> like made his day i guess um <laughs> but i will be at madrid in madrid at madrid i'll be in madrid this weekend for go fest i should be streaming it on twitch although there are six hours in the future i believe so go fest starts at 9 a.m which means my twitch streams will start 3 a.m central time which is really early but if you wake up on Friday or Saturday, and you need something to watch, I'll be there. Um, <laughs> first time in Madrid. I already bought my eSIM card, so it's just waiting to activate when I land. I'm excited. I've never been to Madrid before. Uh, I'll be there for a week. We'll be streaming it, so we'll we'll see what happens. And then, of course, be at New York Go Fest. I don't know what we're going to do for Worldwide Go Fest, which I think is after New York. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so uh, a lot of a lot of IRL streams. If if you want to jump over to Twitch and and watch and see me interact with people that don't speak English, actually, I think English is pretty okay in Madrid, from what I've heard. Not so much in other areas, though. Uh, also, before I forget. <laughs> We're like 25 Patreons away from 1,000. You can actually sign up for Patreon for free. You don't actually have to give money. Um, there's a free tier. So if you would like to see behind the scenes or get updates, patreon.com slash pkmncast. Again, completely free. If you, do, if you do decide to upgrade, that's cool. I'm not going to say no to that. You get ad-free episodes of the podcast, all that stuff. If you're paid you can go down to free and still technically be a member so that's cool too because you'll still get updates um so if 26 of you listening would like to go to patreon so we get to a thousand nothing will really happen it will just be a milestone that will make me feel good we are so (laughs) close to a thousand and just hitting like i just need that serotonin (laughs) there's no pokemon game this year listens are down views are down I totally get it. I need I need something to make my day. So if you would like to make my day, I need 26 of you to go to the Patreon and sign up for the free tier. Please and thank you. Um Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's uh our episode. If you're if you're watching on YouTube, comment below uh which island you are going to go to for this water festival event. And what you think Cramorant's ability is going to be. <laughs> I don't dream think it's going to be extra helpful. Dream if shards. it's dream shards. It's dream <laughs> no, not the dream shards. <laughs> okay. We'll be back next week. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Bobby. This has been another episode of the Pokemon Podcast. And we are super effective. Super. They're going to drop the seven star raid news soon. It's it's. Just watch it be Incineroar. <laughs> <laughs> the world electric stuff, though. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>